Starting off this countdown, we have the cup of ramen noodles. Ever wanted to know what your ramen noodles look like before hot water and delicious seasoning is poured on top of it? Well, now you can. And now, how many of you feel like this is a scam? I thought the whole damn bottom half of the cup was filled, not just a portion of the cup. This literally should be illegal. That and only filling up chip bags halfway. Like what's up with that? Seriously, I get that ramen is cheap and all, but at least give us poor people more noodles than that. Doubt companies are gonna be too thrilled now that we have learned about this. We're on to you. Next up at number nine now, we have Max Headroom. Now this is perhaps the most famous one on the list. Maybe some of you guys have seen it. On the evening of November 22nd, 1987, many people were enjoying an episode of Doctor Who on Chicago WTTW Channel 11. For those Who fans out there, the episode was Horror of Fang Rock. Anyway, the broadcast was interrupted by a signal intrusion. Intrusion. Suddenly, viewers saw an unknown person wearing a Max Headroom mask and sunglasses. Max Headroom was a TV character from a show in the mid 80s. The imposter hijacked the broadcast for 90 seconds in which he rambled about Coca Cola, the TV series Clutch Cargo, and WGN anchor Chuck Swirsky. To be honest, even with subtitles, it's quite difficult to make out what's being said. At the time, an FCC engineer said that the perpetrators would face a maximum $10,000 fine, up to a year in prison, or both. It's been over 30 years since the event though, and the culprits have never been caught. Coming in at the number 8 spot now, we have Vrillon. This is a strange one from 1977. During a regular news show on Southern Television, there was a broadcast interruption just after 5pm on November 27th. After some static and visual warping, a voice made this announcement. This is the voice of Rilla, representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command, speaking to you. That person, calling themselves Vrillon, claimed to be an alien commander from an intergalactic association. The disembodied voice spoke for about six minutes. The main message was a warning to all humans to put down our weapons of war and to enter a new age of Aquarius. Then, and only then, would we make it to the next level of evolution. Return. Moving on to number seven now, we have Playboy. I'm sure I don't need to explain to you guys what Playboy is, and if I do, I probably shouldn't. Needless to say, its late night TV shows have been very popular for many, many years. It's one of those channels where you wouldn't expect to see much uh, religious talk, shall we say. However, that's exactly what you would have seen if you tuned into the channel on September 6th, 1987. Someone interrupted the broadcast that night and displayed a quote from the Bible. I wonder how that went down with the Playboy viewers. The Bible verses were taken from Exodus and Matthew and read, Thus saith the Lord thy God, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The white text and black background appeared during a movie that Playboy had on called Three Three daughters and a number of viewers phoned in to ask what was going on. Police were able to trace the signal though and three years later a man called Thomas Haney was identified as the culprit. Next up at number six now we have the nuke. Okay for this one I want you guys to do a bit of a imagining now. I want you to imagine you're just chilling at home just watching a channel that's showing beautiful scenery live, it's playing relaxing music, that sort of thing and then you see this. Yeah, that looked a lot like a nuke, and people in Czechoslovakia thought so too when this appeared on a TV show called Panorama in June 2007. The show usually just showed scenic footage of the Czech countryside to attract tourists to Prague and the surrounding area. When the camera appeared to show a nuclear bomb exploding during its morning broadcast, all hell broke loose. Some people who lived in the area started trying to leave before the radiation spread. Others were contacting the government asking what to do. The government received so many panic calls that they had to issue an official statement confirming that Prague had not been bombed. It turns out that the footage was created as a performance piece by a group called Zethoven. I'm sure their artistic message is appreciated by some people out there, but maybe not the ones who thought they were actually having to flee for their lives. Coming in at the number five spot now guys, we have The Old Couple. This is a really strange one that occurred in July 2007 during regular broadcasting on ABC's affiliate 
channel WJLA, this image appeared on the screen. Now, to this day, nobody is exactly sure what this picture is of. Clearly, it's two faces. One of them is smiling, and one of them looks quite concerned. The faces look like they've been computer generated. Now, to me, it looks like something out of a 90s video game. This creepy image stayed on the screen for several seconds with no sound before completely vanishing. Many people said there was a dark meaning to all of this, that this was no ordinary interruption. The cable company in charge of the broadcast said there was a programming mix up from an advertisement for the Oprah Winfrey show. That seemed to satisfy by most people, but things took a turn when videos of the event were all removed from YouTube due to restricted access. To this day, I still couldn't find any clips of this on YouTube. All that has survived is this image and the questions that come with it. Coming at number four now, we have War of the Worlds. Have you guys ever seen the War of the Worlds movie with Tom Cruise? I really like that movie, I'm not gonna lie. But did you know where the title for that movie came from? In 1938, future filmmaking legend Orson Welles created a radio drama based on H.G. Wells' novel, The War of the Worlds. It was made to sound like a genuine news broadcast about aliens from Mars invading Earth. If you guys were to hear it on the radio today, you might think, oh, this is obviously a piece of written drama. It's not real. Well, back in 1938, on the eve of World War II, it was a very different time. Many people listening to the broadcast missed the introduction where it clearly states that the following is a piece of radio drama, and they thought it was totally real. This is what they heard. About 20 yards to my right. Ladies and gentlemen, due to circumstances beyond our control, we are unable to continue the broadcast from Grover's Mill. Now, according to legend, some people were so convinced that America was being invaded by Martians that they fled their homes in a panic. In the following days, there was an outcry for broadcasters to be regulated to stop this thing kind of happening ever again. That failed, and the piece went down in history as one of the most famous pieces of radio drama ever, and possibly one of the greatest pranks of all time. Next up at number three now, we have Handy Manny. Some of our North American viewers may have grown up watching this kid show. The animated TV series follows Manny, a repairman with talking tools. It's fun, it's educational, they sing, you get the idea. Handy Manny is also famous though for a shocking broadcast interruption which occurred on May 1st, 2007. Viewers of the show in Lynn Croft, New Jersey had their episode interrupted by a clip from an adult movie. Yeah, say no more. Many of the other interruptions we've talked about usually last for 10, 15, 30 seconds. The adult film clip on Handy Manny went on for several minutes. Naturally, people wanted an explanation. Thousands of kids must have seen this. Comcast was the network that was responsible for the intrusion, or at least they should have been the ones to stop it from happening. They didn't have an answer for why it happened, and over a decade on now, they still don't. Moving on to number two now, we have May Day. On January 3rd, 2007, Channel 7 in Australia was airing a Canadian documentary called May Day, which features cases of air disasters. At some point during the broadcast, things got strange. The visuals continued continued as normal, but the audio started repeating a single phrase on a loop. One quick thinking YouTuber uploaded this video of the event. Many people think that the voice is that of a man from America's deep south saying the phrase, Jesus Christ, help us all, Lord. See what you think. That went on for an astonishing six minutes before everything returned to normal. Many people wanted answers, but Channel 7 were very evasive. They denied that there had been an intrusion, but also disputed what the clip was actually saying. They claimed the voice said, Jesus Christ, one of the Nazarenes. The fact that so many people disagree with that has only added fuel to the fire that something very strange happened that day. And finally, number one now, we have Coast to Coast AM. That's the name of this talk show run by Art Bell. He was used to strange calls on his show, but things got even stranger on September 12, 1997. That night, Art got a call from a guy who claimed to have been an employee at the mysterious Area 51 base, where conspiracy theorists say the US Air Force contained and studied aliens and their crashed spacecraft. The caller sounded terrified and claimed that they were coming for him and that he didn't have much time to share with the world what he knew about Area 51. He talked about extra-dimensional beings who are not what they appear 
appear to be that they have infiltrated the US military and are now taking over. Okay, well, what we're thinking of as, as aliens are they're, uh, they're, they're extra dimensional beings. The caller began to sound more erratic and panicked. Finally, he started talking about how governments are trying to get human populations down to a manageable number so that they're easier to control. Just after this, the line went dead when the power cut out at the station. By the time they got the backup generators running, the caller was gone. Conspiracy theorists say that it was more than a coincidence that the caller was cut off and never heard from again just when he began to spill the beans on secret government activity. Starting off this countdown, we have the zombie broadcast. In February of 2013, an unknown hacker hacked a station in Montana, KRTV. This happened during the broadcast of the Steve Wilco show. Now, what they did was hack into the channel's emergency alert system. Then they broadcast an alert saying that there was a zombie invasion happening in Montana. They said that zombies were leaving their graves and and that some parts of Montana were already taken over by them. However, this warning was not taken seriously. Jokes on them though, because if it was real, they probably all would have died. Others thought that it was just an advertising for the show, The Walking Dead. But no, it was just a random hacker trying to scare people and have fun. They also tried to hack into other television stations, but they were unsuccessful. Moving on at number nine, we have the Bloodless Heart. So I'm sure all of us know what a human heart looks like, right? I mean, like out of the body. I mean, you should, or else that's kind of concerning. Like, don't you not pay attention in school? Anyways, this photo I'm about to show you is what a human heart looks like completely drained of blood. And I am absolutely speechless. That is not what I was expecting. And honestly, it looks really pretty. Is that weird for me to say? I don't know. At first I was like, oh, that's a piece of raw chicken. And then I was like, oh no, no, no. It's like quartz or a gemstone or something. No, it's a goddamn human heart. Mind blown. Coming in at number eight, we have the big lighters. So I was today years old when I found out that big lighters are just little lighters with an extended point. This literally feels like a scam. When you buy a bigger lighter, you're hoping to get more use out of it. But no, it's just a regular lighter, meaning it has the same amount of lighter fluid, meaning you're paying more and getting the same. I will say it's more handy because it's easier to use and helps me not burn my little thingies, but still, this feels illegal. Just goes to show that size doesn't matter and don't judge a book by its cover or whatever people say, okay? My whole life is a lie now. Coming in at number seven, we have the turtle's mouth. Turtles are really freaking cute, right? And aside from snapping turtles, they're pretty slow and harmless creatures. I personally think turtles are so cute. But uh, this next image completely changed my mind. So this image is the inside of a turtle's mouth. Yeah, you heard me. I have never seen anything that creepy before. I thought I was looking inside of an alien's mouth or something, but nope. Apparently the spikes help trap food to prevent it from coming out of their mouth. But that's why plastic is so dangerous for turtles. If they eat it and realize they can't digest it, it's hard for them to get rid of it because of these alien spikes. It often gets stuck on the spikes, which is really sad. But anyways, next time you see a turtle and you're like, oh my God, they're so cute and innocent. Just remind yourself of the evil that lurks in their mouth. I also apologize for all you turtle lovers out there. Sorry. In our sixth spot, we have the unrecognizable objects. Pretty recently, this photo went viral on the internet. Why? Because it disturbed so many viewers. Take a look at this photo and tell me what you see. That's the thing. It's virtually impossible to identify any of the familiar objects. It's wild and leaves you feeling very unsettled. It's like you know what you're seeing, but your brain just can't comprehend it or put a name on it. According to Dr. Frank McAndrew, a psychology professor, he said, and I quote, trying to interpret an ambiguous image like this sparks uncertainty, which can lead to feeling creeped out. When a person is unsure if something could be harmful, it's normal to experience a sense of unease. We also can get creeped out by confusing things that press competing buttons in our brain, making it hard for us to categorize or understand what we are looking at. So there you go. That's why this image is freaking everyone out. I just wish that the poster would come forward and tell us what the hell we're looking at. Like, what is it? I'm not okay. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Flesh Lego Man. 
So I ruined turtles for you. Now it's time to ruin Lego for you. Yay. Now what the actual hell is this? Someone decided to make a flesh Lego man. I am deeply disturbed and I have so many questions. The first one being why, the second one being why, and the third being why. So this was created with the help of special effects makeup artist Frank Ippolito and the team at Tested.com. They decided to dress a man up as this terrifying Lego real life fleshy man and have him hang out at the San Diego Comic Con. But honestly, we still don't know why they did this besides wanting to terrify children and make it so I never sleep again. I honestly think the worst part are its hands. It's got Lego claw hands, but has a freaking nasty fingernail. That's a no from me. Coming in at number four, we have the doll. In 2018, at Cat Scott Lou on Twitter tweeted a picture of this photo and it quickly spread like wildfire. This is a picture of a doll whose face has been removed and then replaced with another doll's face. And apparently this was the works of her little sister, who a lot of people are now concerned for. Apparently she is obsessed with doing this. She has also done this with stuffed animals as well, which is very concerning that some Norman Bates buff Low Bill Ed Jean behavior right there. I'd run if I was her. Next thing you know, she's performing these surgeries on real people. Moving on to number three, we have feet loaf. And yes, it's as bad as it sounds. Some deranged person decided to, instead of making a traditional meatloaf, to take the meat and form it into a person's foot. The worst part is the onions for the toenails. Okay, so 10 out of 10 for creativity and the name, negative 100 out of 10 for doing this though. I'm sure when it was cooked though, it changed its shape and didn't look as bad, but this is something I just did not need to see today. In fact, meatloaf is bad enough as is, making it into feet isn't going to make it more enjoyable to eat. Moving on to number two, we have the unknown figure. This is one image that I wish I could erase from my mind completely. It features an individual hunched over while on their tippy toes and fingers wearing this creepy mask. What's even scarier is that I have no clue where this image came from. I tried reverse image searching and just found a lot of blogs slash posts talking about it, but no one actually knows who posted it or took it or why. This is the definition of a cursed image. So if any of you know the backstory to this photo, please let me know in the comments below so it can stop cursing my sleep. And in our number one spot today, we have Antran. While finding pictures for this video, I stumbled upon this nightmarish one. It features a skinny, creepy robot alongside two kids. Obviously, I was curious about learning more in hopes to find the origin of this photo and if the robot went on to kill a number of people, but all that popped up was a creepy pasta called Antran. The creepypasta goes as so. According to the narrator of the creepypasta, this photo was taken in the 70s and features their son on the left with their robot Antran, who they adopted into their family. This is also the only remaining image they have of their son. So they found this robot at a garbage dump. Someone had tried to throw him away. I wonder why. But they were amazed, so they took him home. In the end, Antran turns evil, torments the family, and eventually kidnaps the son. Now, of course, this is just a creepy pasta, but it's wild how I can't even find the source of this image. A lot of people are in the same boat as me. They have been searching for years to no avail. The image is creepy enough on its own. It's even creepier not knowing the photo's backstory. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below which one of these photos creeped you out the most. Honestly, the turtle? Never expected that, and I just, Ugh. Oh, no thanks. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Wyoming incident. According to internet legend, this was a broadcast hack that happened in 2008, affecting a number of communities in the town of Niobrara in Wyoming. Their regular news show was interrupted with this. Preparation for the 2008 general election. Republican President <laughs> Jack. Over the next six minutes or so, viewers were shown text messages and strange visuals with audio snippets playing over them. Every 10 to 15 seconds, a message would appear announcing that this was a special presentation. The text would say things like, you will see such pretty things, and you are ill, we just want to fix you, and what hides in your mind? Now that last question was later answered with the chilling message of, we have already seen it. What was even stranger was that people reported having a 
physical reaction to the footage. This included vomiting, hallucinations and headaches. Others said that the frequencies played made viewers eyeballs vibrate and create visual hallucinations. I'm glad we didn't show the whole clip then. In our ninth spot today, we have the poem. On February 26, 2022, Anonymous, as part of the cyber war declared to Russia, hacked a number of pro Kremlin TV channels. They decided to broadcast a poem called No War. It's about the Russian Ukrainian war. On top of that, they played footage of what was going on and played Ukrainian music. And recently, they did it again, which I will be talking about in a little bit. In our eighth spot today, we have the inappropriate viewing. In February of 2009, someone hacked KVOA, a channel in Tucson, Arizona. The hack occurred while they were airing the Super Bowl game between Cardinals and the Steelers. And uh, they decided to replace the game with some adult content, if you get what I'm saying. It featured a couple getting it on. And what was funny is that many people sat through it thinking that it was a commercial. But then when there was nudity, they're like, okay, something's going on here. Kids, cover your eyes. The hacker wasn't discovered until two years later. FBI figured out that it was Frank Gonzalez who worked for Cox Cable. The irony on that name. In our seventh spot, we have the Russian TV services. Just recently, amidst the horror that's happening over in Ukraine, Anonymous decided to hack into Russian TVs and to show them the true devastation of Putin's Ukraine invasion. The group then shared videos of this deed onto Twitter. At first, they just targeted the channels on Russia 24, Moscow 24, Channel 1, Wink, and LVI. However, now all Russian state TV channels have been hacked. The broadcast ended with a message that read, ordinary Russians are against the war, and then called for Russians to oppose the attack on Ukraine. Now my thoughts are with anyone currently affected by this war, it is truly devastating. In our sixth spot today, we have the Max Headroom incident. Now this is a very famous broadcast interruption. On November 22nd of 1987 at 914, Chicago sportscaster Dan Rohn was doing his segment when all of a sudden the screen just went black. 15 seconds later, a creepy figure appeared on screen. It was a man dressed in a rubber mask wearing sunglasses. After 30 seconds, the channel regained control of their broadcast. But two hours later, it happened again. This time, to a different station who was playing Sherlock Holmes at the time. This time, the figure said some weird things, like he held up a glove and he said, my brother is wearing the other one. And then he pulled it on saying, but it's dirty. It's like you got blood stains on it. I don't know what's going on. To this day, the hacker has never been caught and we still don't know why this person did what he did, and it's pretty creepy. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Wyoming hijacking. Now this is a pretty creepy hijacking that occurred in 2006 to a channel in Wyoming. Someone hacked an unnamed channel affiliated with ABC. Now reports don't say exactly what channel, so I guess they want some sort of privacy. Anyways, during the evening news, they hacked and played a video of an animated head while text appeared by it. The text read things like, you are ill, we just want to fix you, and you will see such pretty things. It's pretty creepy, right? Well, it gets worse. The hacker also showed some strange images on the screen, accompanied by a strange tone. A number of people reportedly got sick after watching this. They ended up with headaches, nausea, even amnesia. Some even threw up after hearing this tone. Other people hallucinated upon hearing it. To this day, people don't know who was behind it, but some people believe that it wasn't a hacker behind this. Instead, they think it was some paranormal activity. In our fourth spot, we have the Israeli TV stations. In November of 2016, an unknown hacker hacked into Israeli TV stations, channels 2 and 10, during the evening news. In replace of that, they broadcasted messages mocking Israel and saying that God is judging the nation. In fact, at that time, Israel was facing terrible wildfires, so they claimed that this was done by God as a punishment. The hacker also transmitted images of Islamic religious areas and audio of an Islamic call to prayer and scriptures from the Quran. Now, this was aired the night before a vote to restrict Muslim prayer call. They wanted to ban it, citing noise pollution. So this hack was done to be like, God is angry at your decision and this vote, and it was done to try and get them to change their mind about it all. In our third spot, we have the Weather Channel hacking. 
I don't know who would want to hack a weather channel, but this individual thought it was a good idea. But they didn't really cause mischief. They just wanted to stop the channel from running its regular program, which is quite odd. So the hacking occurred on April 18th, 2019, from 6 a.m. to 7:39 a.m. Later, it was discovered that the hack was going to be a ransomware attack. So the hacker wanted the station to pay them money before they could resume airing. But that did not end up happening, so better luck next time. Moving on to number two, we have the adult entertainment cable. This next person decided to hack into some adult entertainment programs like American Ecstasy and Playboy. This occurred in September of 1987. After hacking into it, they played religious messages. I guess to try and tell people that what they were doing and watching is sinful and that they need to turn to God for help. The hacker was later revealed as 38 year old Thomas M. Haney, who worked for the Christian Broadcast Network. He was later charged for the hacks, but they were dropped because there was a lack of evidence. And in our number one spot today, we have the aliens. On November 26th of 1979, an alien hacked into Southern television during the 5 p.m. news. Now, viewers could see the newscaster, Andrew Gardner, but instead of hearing him, they were hearing an alien, or so the broadcast claimed. The voice they were hearing claimed to be an alien called Rilon, who was part of an alien group group called the Ashtar Galactic Command. He said that humans needed to stop engaging in warfare and that every weapon on earth should be destroyed. This should be done in order for the human race to live in peace and only then could humans get to the higher realms of spiritual evolution. Sadly, the aliens message didn't have a huge impact on viewers. But to this day, the hacker remains unknown. Mm -hmm. 